Hi everyone. Today we are diving into a cool concept in consumer behavior, indifference curves. This is based on ordinal utility approach given by J.R. Hicks and R.G.D. Allen. According to them, a consumer can rank various combinations of goods and services in order of his preference. Imagine you love apples and bananas and I give you a choice between two combinations, two apples and three bananas or one apple and four bananas. If both of these combinations make you equally happy, it means that you are indifferent between the two combinations. And we can plot them using a tool known as indifference curves in economics. Before we draw the curve, there is an important concept you need to know, monotonic preferences. This simply means that more is better. For example, if you are deciding between two bundles, one with two apples and three bananas and another with three apples and three bananas, you would always prefer the second bundle because it has more apples without reducing the number of bananas. Consumers always prefer more of a good as it offers him a higher level of satisfaction. Let us define an indifference curve. An indifference curve refers to the graphical representation of various alternative combinations of two goods that provide the same level of utility or satisfaction to a consumer. The consumer is equally happy with any combination on the curve. Before drawing the curve, economists often use an indifference schedule, which is a table showing different combinations of two goods that offer the same utility. This table serves as a guide to plot indifference curves. Once we plot the combinations of apples and bananas from the indifference schedule, we get a smoother downward sloping curve called the indifference curve. This curve, all the combinations P, Q, R, S, T, provides equal satisfaction to the consumer. You will notice that the IC curve is convex to the origin. This shape tells us something very important about consumer preferences. The convexity of indifference curves reflects the diminishing marginal rate of substitution. As you consume one more apple, you are willing to trade fewer of bananas for another apple. Here, if you are looking at combination P, the consumer is consuming one apple and 15 bananas. But for the combination Q, in order to gain one more apple, he is letting go five bananas. For combination R, to consume one more apple, he is letting go four bananas. So every new combination the consumer is in order to gain one more apple is letting go lesser and lesser of bananas. This diminishing willingness to trade goods leads to the convex shape, illustrating how consumers make trade-offs between goods. Now let's understand how to calculate marginal rate of substitution. Marginal rate of substitution is the rate at which a consumer is willing to give up bananas in our example for one more unit of apple. It means MRS measures the slope of indifference curve. As you can see, the formula is marginal rate of substitution of apples for banana is change in bananas divided by change in apple. Unit of bananas a consumer is willing to sacrifice divided by units of apples consumer is willing to gain. This is how you calculate marginal rate of substitution. One key rule to remember, indifference curves never cross. Why? If you look at this figure, you see that on this curve IC1, which is a blue IC1, A equals to B because these both combinations should give the same level of satisfaction to the consumer. But at the same time on IC2, we, can, we are showing that A equals to C. Now this should mean that B equals C, which is not at all possible. Because you are showing that two different indifference curves are giving the same level of satisfaction to the consumer. Always remember 
that each indifference curve represents a specific level of satisfaction and crossing curves would imply a consumer is equally happy with two different satisfaction levels, which is quite impossible. Also, if you could move to a higher indifference curve, it will make you even happier. Each curve represents a higher or lower level of satisfaction depending on how far it is from the origin. Curves further away from the origin indicate higher satisfaction levels. So that's the magic of indifference curves. They help us understand how people make choices that balance their preferences. But as we all know, we don't have unlimited resources and that's where the budget line comes in and we will cover that in the next video. Make sure to subscribe, hit the bell and drop a comment if you found this helpful.